Hey everybody, James W. Falcon here with just a few thoughts more concerning Colin Kaepernick's taking of a need to protest racial injustice here in the United States. Here's a few things for you to think about. There's always been a justification in America for the mistreatment and the murder of people of African descent. Always. There's been the social case made that basically just flat out denied persons of African descent the same privileges as whites for reasons such as things like the Maryland Doctrine of Exclusion, where there were a set of rules put in place that persons of African descent were to be subjugated to white authority. We were to be denied certain privileges. We were not able to enjoy the fruits, the same fruits that white people did in America at that time. Then there were the biological cases that Africans and persons of African descent just aren't biologically equal to whites. Our brains aren't developed uh, nearly as well as they could have been. There is a genetic problem with Africans and persons of African descent. And then there was, of course, the religious cases made where the Bible was used as justification of the fact that God has ordained the subjugation of black people and of persons of African descent. And then, then there were the narratives that began to run. The fact that, that Africans and persons of African descent possess certain criminal tendencies, which ironically began after slavery was abolished and coincidentally after the passage of the 13th Amendment. Do you know why that is? It's because in the 13th Amendment, it specifically says that slavery cannot happen. Except, except that under the case is if a person is duly convicted of a crime, then and only then is slavery permitted. So the very laws that were put in place had within themselves certain loopholes. And that began the narrative, my dear friends, of the criminal tendencies of African Americans. Because we were physically freed from plantation and slavery. And the pursuit then was for us to be apprehended and convicted so we can get put into a system that would perpetuate our slave labor. What's really interesting concerning this is when we look at Colin Kaepernick's protest, one of the things that we see with the racial injustice aspect of this is the fact that when you look at the 14th Amendment, the 14th Amendment declares that persons that were black and of African descent were naturalized citizens. And as citizens, they were entitled to what's called due process of law in matters concerning life, liberty, and property. Yet, it seems that for the case of Africans and persons of African descent, there are questions concerning those rights at every hand. Why and how, you might ask? Well, here's something for you to think about. The horrible practice of lynching. Lynching is something that took place in America that the notable author and uh, anti-racism spokesperson Tim Wise refers to as things called systematic extrajudicial proceedings. And they were the, the things that took place where a black person would be hung on the basis of an accusation. The problem with that is that the 14th Amendment declares that a person be tried and then convicted, but these extrajudicial activities didn't allow that citizen the right to have the rights extended to him that the Constitution says he or she should. Do you know what the killing of Philando Castillo is? Do you know what the killing of Eric Garner is? 
It is, according to Tim Wise and others, another in the series of extrajudicial proceedings. Regardless of the accusation, those persons should have been delivered into a system which provided for them the opportunity to stand trial. And instead, they were murdered. And do you know why they were murdered? They were murdered because the same narrative plays out. It was a justification of some sort. For Trayvon Martin, it was, I stood my ground. For uh, Eric Garner, it was, and for Philando Castile, it was, well, I feared for my life. My safety was at stake. My dear listening friends, the narratives haven't changed. There have been some substitutions in the wording but the narratives are the same. And what's sad is that the very laws that have been put in place have loopholes. And sometimes, as most of the time, practically all of the time, when it comes to Africans and persons of African descent here in America, those very same loopholes, when it comes to us, are always, always exploited. The thing that I want to leave you with tonight is since we have been released from a physical slavery, we have suffered under a much worse kind of slavery. It's one that is constitutionally initiated. The very loopholes created in the laws have been pursued fervently, found and exploited as it relates to black people and persons of African descent. Do you want to know why Colin Kaepernick has taken a knee? Do you want to know why that, that black people feel so passionately about this issue of equal rights? Do you want to know why there was a civil rights movement? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because we fought wars. We fought wars for our freedom only to come home and not have any. We have sat in, we have stood up, we have taken needs, we've done protest at lunch counters, we've been denied the right to water fountains and other public facilities and accommodations, we have been denied the rights to vote, We've gone to the White House. We've marched on Washington. We've even taken a knee in modern day sports arenas and events. And yet and still, the result for the black man, the result for the black woman, the result for the person of African descent in America is still the same. So my question to you, my friend, is are we really free?